in our prayers. Amen. Let's keep our troops in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Some of us have family. Some of us have kindred um, that are deployed. Uh, each day, groups are taken off to go overseas. And I uh, want us to keep them in our prayers as well. Let's show some love for this choir as they prepare. Them. All right, so we're going to ask if you all can sing along with us, all right? And this song is very, very easy. Once you hear it, you'll catch on to it. All we're going to say is, Lord, you're mighty. Can you say, Lord, you're mighty? Lord, you're mighty. Can you sing that? Say that? Good. And it's going to be call and response. It's gonna sound like this. Lord, you're mighty. 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 All right. So you got it. All right. I'm gonna be listening for you all to join in with us. All right. Here we go. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord you're, Lord, you're mighty. Say, 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 Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. I'm moving on. The next word says, What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God. Mighty God we serve. Angel. Say that again. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angel, bow before the mighty God we serve. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're, mighty. Lord, you're, mighty. Lord, you're mighty. so mighty. Lord, you're 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 mighty. What a, what a mighty God we serve. Mighty God. Mighty God we serve. Angels. Angels. 
what a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. Mighty God, mighty God we serve. Let, let heaven and earth, and earth mighty God we serve. What a mighty God, what a mighty God. Mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Let angels bow before. Mighty God we
you do understand that if God is mighty, everything else does not measure up to our mighty God. Songwriter said he's almighty. That means that no one has more might than him. That means that situation is not as powerful as your God. It means that circumstance is not as powerful as your God. It means that nothing that comes against you is more powerful than your God. And so when we say what a mighty God we serve, we ought to be able to say it with enthusiasm, with confidence. Anybody know we serve a mighty God? Oh, y'all, y- listen. Y- y- y'all act like he can't deal with your situation. Some of us act like he can't help you through your situation. I- I- I've learned and discovered that there's nothing impossible for him because with him all things are possible. Come on, let's bless God for being a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray, our God and our Father. We thank you. We thank you for this moment, this time. We thank you for the worship experience. Now, God, it's come to the preaching hour. And I can't do this without your preaching power. On this first Sunday of 2020, may this word come forth. And with it, Lord, may it come with clarity. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to draw your attention this afternoon to the uh, the book of First John, the book of First John, chapter two, First John chapter two. And if you're not sure, look at your wristband. I'll tell you where we at, MJ. First John chapter two. Three verses of scripture, three verses of scripture. And I'm going to do some teaching this morning. Each year we always use the theme scripture as our first sermon of the year. You know, it's one thing to have something and not understand what you have. Somebody didn't catch that. So we're going to talk about what we have. First John chapter 2 beginning at verse 15. I'll be reading from the King James Version though I will parallel the New American Standard Bible. First John chapter 2 verse 15. If you found it say amen. We find these words. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You may be seated in the presence of God. Brothers and sisters, this afternoon I want to share with you from this thought, this subject, this topic of consideration, developing disciples to display, I did say display, developing disciples to display the standards of God. That's the subject. It happens to be the theme. Displaying the standards of God. Some things that I will share will be a supplement to this morning's message. Uh, Most will be similar. uh, Especially how I came about 
our theme for to the year of 2020. And it's very important for you to understand Olive Branch because I spend time with God and I spend time in meditation saying, Lord, where do you want us to focus in the upcoming year? And God had a unique way of presenting it to me this year because uh, like other preachers, Brother Jackson, I uh, was tempted to use the cliche, being that we were entering into a new year and a new decade, the year of 2020. You know, it sounds good to talk about Vision 2020 or 2020 Vision. That, that's where I was leaning toward. It sounds good talk about the fact that God wants to bring some things in clarity or to clarify some things and expose and make things or suggesting that God has so much greater for us in 2020 but I, I'm reminded that he had some great things for me in 2019 he intended to give me some great things in 2018 and just maybe I missed it, Sister Beasley, because I was not displaying the standards of God. And so this amazing minister Ashley, how it came to me, I was thinking about Vision 2020 and 2020 being the cliche. And, and God said, you talk about 2020 and it being greater, you will have missed the mark. He said, let me remind you, when you go to get your eyes examined, and you sit in that chair, and they run you through a series of tests. Y'all know, uh, you got to cover one eye, stand behind the line. Uh, if you got glasses, take them off. Tell me uh, the lowest line you can read. And some of us say, you need to go to another chart. Y'all know, they sit you in that machine, put your chin in the cup. Hold your eyes, watch, and then they'll run another test so you keep your eye. You know that puff going to come, and you got to open, keep your eyes open. That puff messes me up every time. Y'all know when you go get your eyes checked, they sit you in the chair and put you in front of this device and technology, and they'll switch it and say, which one's better, A or B? Y'all know when they check it. Well, I discovered, as Sister Antoinette, that the ultimate goal is for them to be able to bring you to a standard level of sight. While we think, Brother Daniels, 2020 is something extra, 2020 is simply the standard. That's why some of us, if we're substandard, they prescribe you corrective lens. Whether it's eyeglasses or whether it's contacts, I'm one of those candidates that uh, when I sit in the chair, I got to let them know that I need some help in my vision. And so they bring me, Sister Jackson, to at least 2020. Since they'll tell you, they won't let me out the chair until they ensure that I can see at least 2020. And God said, in the year of 2020, it's not about abundance and all of these great things. It's about standards. Because if the church is going to survive, the church must display standards. I, I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah, it was tough at 8 o'clock too. I, uh, let me suggest to you, it'll get better throughout the year. Amen. But for today, he's going to talk to us about standards. You know, folk don't like being told about standards. A standard suggests that you got to do things a certain way. And I'm not here to pro uh, profess or to introduce you to any other way but the Lord's way. First John, an interesting epistle. Uh, it was one of three general epistles written by the Apostle John. A general epistle, my brothers and sisters, is simply that. Uh, it's not written to a particular church or a particular region or a particular section like when Paul wrote to uh, Ephesus and he wrote uh, to the Colossians. Uh, the, these general epistles are written to every believer. And that's good news just in case you thought this first sermon of the year uh, was going to miss you. This is for everybody. 
General Pistol applies to all of us. And as the Apostle John writes, and his interest is to help believers, just as God wants to help us today. This was written some 55 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what's interesting, Trustee Stewart, is that many renowned the authorship as the same John that wrote the gospel. I said this would be really interesting because John's efforts in the gospels was to write about the significance and the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. But now in his general epistles, he hadn't forgotten Christ. But he decides to focus on helping the church survive. And we are facing, as I shared with the 8 o'clock service, we're facing, it was interesting, uh, to hear in church school and people were talking about excuses and there's a whole lot out here in the world that will bring up excuses as why the church ought not be attended or why the church should not survive but the devil is a liar y'all do remember he said and upon this rock shall I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I'm a proponent, I'm a supporter of the church, but if the church is going to be vibrant, if the church is going to have an impact on the community, we've got to display some certain standards. And here it is in 1 John, as we prepare to examine the text, the Bible shows us here in these three verses that John decides to attack uh, some of the teachings that was being done um, I shared with the 8 o'clock service, uh, it's called Gnosticism. And Gnosticism generally is a practice where you have those that are opponents of the teaching of Jesus Christ. And they suggest that God was not infamous and perfect in his nature because he created human beings. And they practiced and they taught that being human was evil. That's what the Gnostics taught, but I can refute that because uh, you do understand that Jesus Christ was born in the flesh. He was man, y'all. He was human. He was God made flesh. And yes, God cannot be a part of anything evil, so being human cannot automatically make you evil because Jesus was human. I'm trying to help somebody. It's not the fact that we're human, but the Bible said a man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Notice, watch this, they're full of trouble. Didn't say that they were trouble. I'm trying to help somebody. So human beings are not evil. It's what the world puts in us that makes us evil. And John says, I gotta, gotta help y'all. Three verses, I promise you I'm out the way. Uh, he says in the text, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hold up, wait a minute. Preacher, you really hurting us. Oh, I, it ain't me, it's first John. Because John didn't even give an introduction. He didn't give a salutation. I told the earlier service that he wouldn't even give a conclusion. He cut straight to it. He said, listen, I want y'all to understand you cannot love the world and call yourself as one who loves the Father. It's in the text. He said, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is this saying to us, my brothers and sisters? This is one of many tests that the apostle John writes. In this particular test, uh, is one that would ask us the question, how do we know if we really know God? Anybody ever ask you that question? Just because you go to church don't mean you know God. Just because you show up at church school don't mean you know God. Just because you carry a Bible doesn't mean you know God. Just because you can put a suit together doesn't mean you know God. How do we know? How do we know if we really know God? This is part of the test. And here... As he introduced it earlier, this test proves whether or not we know God. Do we love the world? If a person loves the world, he does not know God. It seems kind of tight. Can I suggest to you, don't be too discouraged too fast. Even though all of us have got caught up and engaged, but here to understand that we can know God 
and love less of the world. No matter what a person may feel or think, the scripture is clear and it is forceful in its statement. The person who loves the world does not know God. Here's the test, verse 15. Do we love the world? He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Here's the problem. Evidently, John knew what the problem was. The world is a part of God's creation. And in the beginning, he blessed it. It was good. Sin messed the world up. When sin came in the world, the world was good. But the sin messed the world up because sin got in. We were intended to be good. But what makes us bad is when the world gets in us. And that's why he warns us to not love the world. Listen, we live in the world. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy life. Folk talking about living your best. Live your best life. Enjoy the creature comforts and commodities of this world. He says, just don't love it. Because when you love it, you put it ahead of the God you're supposed to love. I'm, am I making any sense to anybody? It is, do we love the world? He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But wait a minute, preacher, I love the Lord. We sing songs, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. Folks said, for him I live and for him I, I love the Lord. Yeah, I got some worldly stuff in me, but I love the Lord. I, I do some things I shouldn't do, but I love the Lord. I know there's somebody testimony in here. I, I, I done got caught up a few times, but I love the Lord. I hear you. He's saying that you can't love the Lord just because you get involved or just because you get caught up. He's saying you don't love him if you love the world. How do you know if you love the world when you put things of the world before him? How do you know you love the world when you prioritize the things of the world before him? When you let this test overcome you. So we see that this is a test. Verse 15, do we love the world? Uh, but then, verse 16, for all that is in the world. Here are some things to be careful of. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father. He names three things. He names three things that are not of the Father. Which means that if you get caught up and you put these before, then you're saying you love them more than your daddy. Alright, here it is. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. My brothers and sisters, the test is clear. A believer can tell whether or not he knows God by taking this test, examining his life to see if he loves the world. What is meant by the world? Does this mean that we're not to appreciate the beauty, splendor, and the resources of earth and heavens? Does this mean we can't go to Fort Lauderdale and hang out at the beach? Does this mean we can't cruise on Carnival Cruise Line because that's the party cruise line? No, that does not mean what that means. Enjoy yourself. You know, you can eat at midnight if you want to. Enjoy yourself. Go catch some waves. That's not what he's talking. He's saying if you put those things ahead of him, then you don't have his love in you. I had to clarify that thing. You won't listen to jazz? Listen to jazz. Let me borrow a tape. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Can I suggest to you that's not what he's saying. He said it's when you make these things a more, more of a priority than, than God, that's when you know that you are not one who knows God. He says, please understand, the world means uh, that which is corruptible and deteriorating. That will eventually be destroyed. Therefore, believers must not become attached to the world. That is, that's how you know if you love the world more than you love God. 
You become so attached. So when the world disappoints you, you about to lose your mind and fall apart. But if you are attached to the father, you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know you ain't got to lose. Yeah, it might upset me. It might bother me. might even bring tears to my eye. But guess what? It's not going to change the fact that I still got my father. Here, he moves to verse 16 and introduces us to the professing man. The one who suggests, uh, in verse 16, these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Preacher, you're going to have to help me. The lust of the flesh. I told 8 o'clock, we hear lust, we think it's all sexual. I had to prepare for my babies. No, it ain't all sexual. Lusting, you can lust after a whole lot of things. You can lust after an Xbox. If you're spending all your time and not doing the things that you're supposed to do when your parents tell you you're supposed to do them, you can lust after a certain clothing line. You can lust after a particular team. I had to look at this and say, Lord, please forgive me. Everybody know I, I like my team. But what he's suggesting is if when you make these things and you get so attached to these things that when they disappoint you and they will disappoint you. Let me throw this in parenthetically. Just imagine if folk had got attached to the cowboys. They wouldn't even be in church right now. Amen. Thank God that they didn't, Sister Katrina, uh, thank God. That you didn't attach yourself. Because you know whether they win or lose, there's still a God in heaven. Let me move on. What he's simply saying is be careful who you attach yourself to. Be careful what you attach yourself to. The world is a system of man-made governments and societies. Some good and some bad, but none perfect. Some good and some bad, but none perfect. We're looking for perfection in all the wrong places. There's no one perfect, no, not one, except the one in whom we serve. The world means a system of sin and lust and evil and pride and rebellion against God. Yeah, the problem is, is that when you get caught up in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, let me pause right there. Everything that looked good to you ain't good for you. Y'all heard it before, everything that glitters ain't gold, ain't good. Let me suggest to you that you've got to be careful. That's why it's good that you go get your vision check. Let the Lord give you some corrective lens. I want some Christ contacts. Y'all trying to go get the blue color ones. I just want some Christ contacts. Help me see. Here it is, the professing man. He goes on, verse 16. He says, and the pride of life. This is a good one because the Bible says pride cometh before the fall. We're talking about developing disciples to display the standards of God. You can't display the standards of God when you're caught up. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this is what's most important here, Sister Ariel, is this pride thing. See, pride will destroy you. See, pride suggests that even when you know you're wrong, you ain't going to acknowledge that you're wrong. Because guess what? You bigger than everybody else. Yeah, I might got my issue, but you, you know somebody else got an issue. But Because you think you're bigger and better than somebody else. Pride will destroy you. Pride of having you think you more than what you are. We used to play basketball. The cheerleaders used to be on the sideline. Now they had this cheer. And the end of it say, you yourself ain't that red hot. I used to like them to cheer that with saying to the opposing team. Because there's some folk that think that they are more than what they are. And that'll cause you a problem. Because you're going to think you deserve more than what you have. You're going to think that somebody owe you more than what they gave you. Don't get caught up on pride. 
That's why humility is so important. Because pride will cause you, watch this, destruction. Come here, Bible study. Pride cometh before the fall. Here it is. And I'm done. We're trying to talk about developing disciples to display the standards of God. My brothers and sisters, God is saying to us, we can't convince anybody, influence anybody, draw anybody. Talking about church school, I enjoy church school today. First time in 16 and a half years, I sit through church school the whole time. Amen, somebody. First one in class. Amen, somebody. Had a great instructor. Amen, somebody. And the discussion was about going out into the world, reaching as Jesus did, setting and supping with sinners. Let me, and publicans, let me suggest to you that if we don't display the standards of God, I don't care how many times you go out. You ain't going to draw nobody in. Amen, somebody. Oh, that's tough. Y'all ready to go home now. Here it is. It's just the first Sunday. We get the theme out of the way. Developing the disciples to display the standards of God. We see in the text, the tests, do we love the world? We see the professing man. But it ain't over, y'all. Because he gives us good news. He said, you can't get caught up in those things that draw you, that dis watch connect you, uh, that makes you worldly. You can't get caught up in those things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride. Because these things will cause you separation. But here's some good news. As we are developing disciples to display the standards of God, please understand, God has standards. You can't go out and do what you want to do. You got to do it the way the Lord wants you to do it. How you going to convince somebody that Jesus is the Savior of the world when you act in unsaved? How you going to convince somebody that they need the Lord if you act like you so puffed with pride, you don't need anybody. You sick in your body, your pride, have you going around telling folk you don't need nobody. Well, I don't need you to go tell them you need a doctor, but at least tell them you need Jesus. How did you make it? The Lord was with me. How did you overcome it? The Lord was with me. How did you get through that struggle? The Lord was with me. I'm trying to display the standards of God. You got to walk a certain way. Watch this. You ain't got to be perfect because you can't be perfect. Keep in mind the people you're trying to reach ain't perfect. So why are you trying to act a way that you ain't to impress somebody that ain't what you think they are? Here it is. Here it is. Is we're going to develop disciples to display the standard of God. I don't want you to run out of here angry. I don't want you to run out of here saying it was a tough one today because if you do, you didn't read verse 17. Yeah, verse 17. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. My brothers and sisters, can I suggest to you that God doesn't want us to fit into the world. He wants us to show the world. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians 7 and 31, And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. What's the good news, preacher? You done hit us hard, but I want you to know, all you've got to do is commit yourself to the standards of God. And eventually, the world that's been pressing against you. And the world that's been trying to influence you. That world will one day pass away. I ain't making it up for the Bible. The Bible says in verse 17, And the world passeth away. And if the world passeth away, guess what goes with the world? The lust thereof. You mean to tell me, preacher, if I just hold on, 
if I just lean and depend uh, and trust in God, uh, if I commit myself to doing what is right and good, uh, if I come on down off of my prideful horse, uh, if I say no to those things that have influenced me in the world, uh, if I choose not to do what the world is doing, uh, uh, you don't have to do what the world is doing uh, because the world will soon pass away. Uh, is there anybody in the house this afternoon uh, that when you read verse 17, uh, you get excited uh, because uh, you think that you've got a struggle uh, on your hands? Preacher, uh, it's hard. Uh, I said it's hard. Y'all heard Deacon Bell's testimony uh, when he, before he came to the Lord. I ain't trying to tell it. They got to show up to church school to hear it. Uh, but you don't want uh, to move away from the things of the world huh? you do know the things of the world huh? might make you feel good huh? but they won't make you feel good forever huh? the things of the world huh? might pique your interest huh? but they won't pique your interest forever huh? why preach it for the bible the bible the bible says huh? that the world will pass away huh? hold up wait a minute huh? I got my encouragement here huh? and you beat me up pastor uh, talking about all these things I can't do uh, but is there anybody here uh, that know the Lord uh, can turn your situation around uh, the bad in you uh, the Lord can deliver you uh, the wrong in you uh, the Lord can deliver you uh, is there anybody here uh, that can testify uh, that I'm a witness uh, that the Lord can change you uh, I said is anybody here uh, that can testify uh, that the Lord uh, can change you uh, okay if I can't get a witness uh, can I speak for myself uh, I'm so glad uh, that the Lord uh, thought enough of me uh, that he would change me uh, I haven't always uh, known my father uh, I haven't always uh, tried to be uh, who my father wants me to be uh, but I've learned Ha, to trust in him ha, and he will ha, I said he will y'all you can take it to the bank ha, he will ha, he'll fix you up ha. anybody know he'll fix you up ha. well the bible says ha, that you don't have to give up ha, just because you've been doing bad ha, just because you've been acting bad ha, just because you've been places ha, that you had no business going ha. the lord Ha, he gives us a chance ha, and he reminds us ha, that that thing ha, that's got a grip on you ha, it ain't gonna last ha. that thing ha, that entices you ha, it ain't gonna last ha. how do you know preacher ha, for the bible says so ha, and the world ha, passes away ha, and the lust thereof ha, thereof ha. but he that doeth the will of God ha, hold up wait a minute huh? are you telling me preacher huh? after all the wrong I've done huh? I still got a chance huh? it said he huh, that does the will huh, of the father huh? I'm so glad huh? he gives me a chance huh? Lord I've been wrong huh? I've done wrong huh? but I profess huh, that I will huh, do the best I can huh? I will huh, try my best uh, to be able uh, to do your will uh, and is there anybody here uh, that say Lord uh, help me do your will uh, because the world uh, that has influenced me uh, peer pressure uh, that has pushed me uh, just the other day uh, a sad story uh, about a child uh, that decided uh, to call it quits uh, well can I help somebody don't you give up don't you let go don't you give in cause the father he's standing
standing by and all he wants us to do is do his will can you turn to your neighbor say neighbor just do his will for the text says that if you do his will you will abide it forever in other words brother Orlando what John is saying he said listen the world's gonna pass away the lust is gonna pass away but when you do the will of God he said abide this word in the original language comes from the Greek word that means to surpass or go longer than normal or to overcome or exceed and so what he's saying is if you do my will you will outlast you will overcome you will surpass what the world is those against you I'm so glad that he's reminded me that I can abide forever I know sometimes it gets real tough for the older kids it gets like Pookie sometimes and y'all know Pookie Pookie say I'm trying my best but he keep on calling me well can I help you when it calls you call on your daddy and say daddy somebody's calling me and can you take the line and is there anybody here that know when daddy gets on the line okay y'all didn't get it I had five sisters growing up they were all older than I am and boys used to call the house all the time and I was a little sneaky little brother and sometimes when they call instead of giving the phone to my sister I gave it to my daddy I said daddy some boys calling my said daddy pick up the phone said hello the boy on the other line wouldn't say nothing hang up the phone that's the way God will do for you when the enemy calls you up give the phone to your daddy he'll work it out won't he do it say I'm done here it is here it is developing disciples here it is developing disciples to display the standards of God little boy little boy in the third grade his name was Sammy little Sammy went to school one day other kids started messing with him little Sammy was a respectable kid didn't cause any problems never got in trouble boys was messing with little Sammy Sammy the boy talk about Sammy Sammy wouldn't say anything other kids laugh Sammy say sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt Sammy sit down do his work little boy pluck him upside the head teacher say Sammy I noticed that when people mistreat you you don't act like other kids so Sammy why, why is it that you treat people kind you always say yes sir no sir look 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 Sammy say that's that's the way uh, my daddy raised me next day little Sammy came same boy plucked him in the ear hit him on the side of the cheek Sammy say I forgive you Sammy said don't do it again teacher said Sammy most kids would have done something retaliated so Sammy why didn't you respond I said no my daddy taught me he said Sammy you say yes sir you say no sir Sammy you're a manable kid you learn you're different from the kids next day Sammy comes boy that plucked him in the ear that slapped him on the cheek slapped Sammy again Sammy reached back punched him straight between the eyes knocked the little boy down the boy went crying Jesus came to Sammy and said, Sammy, you've been doing good for these days. I've watched you. Say, you're so manly. You're forgiving people. I mean, you, you, you're just, you're different. But Sammy, the day you, you, you punched him, why'd you punch him? 
He said, your daddy taught you. He said, listen, my daddy taught me standards. Yeah. My daddy said, do good unto others. Daddy said, forgive people. Daddy said, don't let folk, watch this, push you to become something you're not. Those are standards. But, but Sammy, why you punch him? He said, because their daddy taught me another standard. He said, when folk hit you, they said, turn the other cheek. But Sammy, you punched him. No, I turned the other cheek yesterday. My daddy never told me I had to turn it more than once. I'm just saying. So don't think because you live by God's standards that the world has the upper hand. Because can I tell you what the text says? It's for my young people. The world and lust is going to take a L because they're going to pass away. But guess what? Those who do the will of God will abide it forever. So guess who took the L? The world did. And all you've got to do is stand up against the world and do the will of God and watch the world pass away. And I simply stopped by on this first Sunday of 2020 to remind you that God is trying to develop disciples to display the standards of God. Let the world see God in you. Remember, your father is with you. And as long as I got him, I don't need nobody else. Standing all over the building, standing, standing. Developing disciples to display the standards of God. I know it's tough out here. I know. I know it's tempting out here. I know. But what he's asking us to do is to display the standards of God. While we're standing, the doors of the church are open. The invitation is being extended. Perhaps there's one here today. You do not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins. You have not received him as your personal savior. Jesus Christ, the one John wrote about in the gospel. The one that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The one he wrote about is the same one that has given his life as a ransom for you and I. And if you're here today and no one ever told you that Jesus saves, he gave up his life, he laid it down so that we might have eternal life. That's how we know we can abide it forever. So if you're here today and you're saying, Lord, I surrender my all, I give my life to you, we want you to come. you're here today saying Lord save me he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins he promised us that if we would only accept and believe he promised us that we too can be saved is there another to come today give your life to Jesus just as you are you can't display the standards of God if you haven't received the Savior of God see he saves you so that you don't have to worry about what you used to be and even when you fall short he's able to pick you up because you're one of his he came for the sick he showed up for the lost so if you're here today surrender your own give your life to Jesus that's my first appeal. Here's my second appeal. You're here today. You know the Lord. You have a relationship. You've been seeking and searching. 2019, you were out there looking. Lord, show me. And today, perhaps, he's trying to say, I've shown you. Not a perfect church. But here at Olive Branch, we consider that we are a church headed down a perfect path and that path is the word of God so you may come today by letter by Christian experience saying Lord I know that this is where you would have for me to be we're not trying to pull you we're not trying to push you we're simply trying to prick you the Bible says forsake not the assembly of the believers a church home a place where you can grow serve be loved 
And if you believe the Lord is leading you to unite with this fellowship, come, man, woman, boy, or girl, whosoever will, come. Is there another to come? Saying, Lord, I know this is where you would have me to be. If you're here, he's speaking to you, not someone else, speaking to you, speaking to you, speaking to you, saying, how much longer, how much longer, how much longer, how much longer, and I'm saying this because, listen, When the record came of the bombing and the attack, there's some folk got scared. There's some folks said, oh, this is it. They gonna retaliate. Listen, I said to them, I don't know whether they're gonna retaliate or not, but is your soul anchored in the Lord? If you have a relationship with the Lord, trust him because no matter what happens the text says we abide it forever so we got hope that we can live forever and so I just want to remind you of that if you're here today come grow with us not just come go with us come grow with us we send that invitation that's my second appeal here's my third and final appeal you're here today You don't know where you stand. You were once connected. You've become disconnected. You've become separated. And today you want to reconnect, recommit. First Sunday of the year, what better time? Tomorrow's not promised. Rededication, recommitment, we'll pray for you just as you are right where you are. We simply say, come forward. And we will help you. We want you to leave here knowing that God is your Father, Jesus is your Savior, and the Holy Spirit is your indweller. Is there one today? Whosoever will. You may be seated. but I want to take liberty of this time um, so that when we do receive the report I know that we'll be full of rejoicing um, I want to I want to share this um, to all the branch members um, very careful about how much time I spend during the service but because this liberty is granted uh, many of you stopped by the table today today kicked off our campaign 2020 um, it kicked off the largest endeavor, the largest goal that we've ever had. And I want to remind us that even when the world says it can't be done, you got enough scripture to tell you that eventually they're going to move aside. Their words will pass away their influence will pass away their criticism will pass away they're just being downright ornery will pass away let me suggest to you to simply do the will of God as God leads you do the best that you can so please pick up one of those off the table if you were not here at the church business meeting or you haven't gotten one yet take it home pray about it ask God to show you his will and let his will be done through you. Amen? Is that too much to ask? 
All right. I ain't said nothing. I'm just simply saying what I'm saying. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, when I leave from here today, I'm on display. Now be careful what you say. No, I ain't mean you to tell your neighbor that. I'm, I'm talking to you who said it. Y'all know you go to a restaurant and they put their best stuff on display. I used to go to this restaurant, I had all these desserts in the window, in the, in the little thing, the glass. Man, they look good. Come find out all of them were fake. Don't act like you ain't never picked up a plastic banana. Amen. Because they put their best things on display. Go to a clothing or department store. Outfits. They put their best stuff on display. New stuff on display. So you can see it and say, I want that. Well, can I help you understand? God wants to do the same for us. He wants to put us on display. So the world can see us and say, I want to be like that. We're getting ready to hear our report. Amen. Good afternoon, Well, hold church. on, hold on. Did you know that there was somebody else in the back? Okay, so you, okay. All right, go ahead. I'll wait. All right. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, good afternoon again, church. We have two young, beautiful people, twins. And I just realized that. The young man, they were coming to us by way of baptism, and the young man's name is Maximus R.A.L. Preston, yes. and the young lady's name is Mackenzie Ryan Michelle Preston. Amen. And let's give them a hand clap of praise. Max, come here. Not putting them on the spot. We're ready. We're ready to compel. Just so you know, we don't want nobody thinking you and your auntie. Oh, yeah. Got the same name. Um, what's your middle name? Ariel. 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 Want y'all know that? Ariel. Ain't Ariel. It's Ariel. Ariel. Right. Go and have a seat. Go and have a seat. <laughs> oh, we. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, the gospel, uh, gospel word has been preached, and we have one that come before us that uh, wishes to uh, join the church by Christian experience, and her name is Mrs. Jacqueline Young, and she is coming from City Church of Richmond, Virginia, and she wishes to become a full-fledged member of Olive Branch Baptist Church. We have had the prayer of salvation, and I have uh, instructed her that she has to take uh, four new members' classes, and after she has completed her four new members' classes, she can come before the church and receive the right hand of fellowship. Let's give her a round of applause for coming today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Man, amen. All right. Let's show them some love. Let's show them some love. I was going to say something, but I'm going to say that. Uh, I've got a special thing to tell you. Coming from City Church, we, we've got some special things to share. Um, but we'll do that later. Amen. All right. Okay. Time to go. My game kick off at 105. And it's 104, so stand on your feet. Amen. Y'all ain't holding me up today. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, remember, remember. you're on display. Don't you forget. Keep the standards. Every heart, every mind, every soul. Every heart, every mind, every soul.
Before we close out, can y'all do me one big favor? Can we show some love once again for the voices of youth? Yeah! Amen. To all of our directresses, our musicians, to listen, I want y'all to know. I see, I don't even care about my game now. You all rock. You all are inspirational to us. And I, I want y'all to know how important y'all are. Y'all so important, we're going to see you summertime. Amen. So we so glad to have them. And thank you all, advisors. Thank you all for working. MJ, good job working with them. I appreciate it. All right. Every heart, every mind, every soul. Our God and our Father, we thank you for what eyes have seen, ears have heard, and hearts have felt. We thank you for reminding us that we are to develop disciples to display the standards of God. So Lord, let us be those disciples, not only to help develop others, but that we will be developed ourselves. Lord, be with us, watch over us, and keep us until we gather together again. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the love of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth and forevermore. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. It's a new year. It's a new decade. It's a new opportunity to get things right. Amen. And we're in the right place to worship and lift up the King of Jesus this morning. Are you happy?